Well, good morning. Kip, good to see you today. You're back to being our first poster. Bob Ando, good morning. Hi, Amy. Good morning to you. Chris Vaughn, good morning. Perhaps Kevin's around. Oh, 11 folks already. Good Monday morning to everybody. A little rain, but we need that. We need that rain here in Southeast Michigan. We need it throughout the whole state, but I actually, uh, hi, Sandy Sauerbeck. Hi, Linda Clark. Carrie Van, good morning. So it's, um, um, I've just been noticing we have this, I have the, uh, the smallest lawn that I've ever had. I've told you that before. It's like three postage stamps put together, but um, the uh, but when we bought the house, it's got a, a sprinkling system. So I I have it go 15 minutes each area of the lawn gets 15 minutes three times a week, and that's been fine. But it's actually been starting to dry out, and um, water is expensive around here. So I've been hesitant to add any more watering into it. So maybe this will maybe this will green up those spots in my lawn a little bit. We'll see what happens. Norma Bentley, good morning. Hi, Art Hughes. Don Jones, good morning. Joanne Butters, good to have you with us. And Robin Allen. Hi, Judy Martin. Judy supplied us all with watermelon yesterday. A leftover from the Oasis. So, uh, and we have 21 folks with it. Gene Hartley, good morning. Good to see you today. Just give everybody a little bit of time to get going here. I know Barry and Margo probably are, I don't know if they're going to be with us today or not. I think they got a busy morning. Linda Wolf, good morning. They're almost always here. Maybe they're on, maybe they're, they're watching on a phone, maybe somewhere. We'll see what happens. Linda Wolf, good morning. All right. So, um, let's see. Before we get going here, we got a couple minutes. So I got stuck in the rain. I made a quick trip to Meyer and Allen Park before coming to work, pick up some staples, and it uh, wasn't raining when I went in there, but it was sure raining when I came out. So it got a little wet, a little wet. Uh, I hope you all had great weekends. It's hot. It's going to be hot humid today, but then the relief comes. We're going to have a beautiful week after that. I hope wherever you may be, that if you're not in this immediate area, that you're going to get that, get some relief too, because it's just been almost a third of the people in the country have been exposed to extreme heat over the last couple weeks, two to three weeks. So it's been nationwide. So uh, let's see here. Um, Joan Riggs, good morning to you. So we do need to continue to lift people up in prayer. Beth Stanton, it's been uh, having some, I got to call her today, but uh, we need to lift her up in prayer. Everyone, there's so many people, some people in need of, uh, of uh, more serious intervention and some of us just saying, I know I want to be whole, I want to be whole. So. We pray for health. That's become a focus of my prayer here in the last, I'd say, six weeks or so. I just don't. So, and Audie, we need to pray. For, Judy Hatch is asking for prayers for Audie for a new knee replacement today. And Judy's asking for Jeff and Liz. Absolutely. Yes, serious, serious health concerns for some that we need to lift up. Oh, and Helen England's back. You know, other people have had that problem too. So if you have that technical problem, let us know, right? And well, I know uh, we have not, I, I don't know if I can help you, but other people can. Sometimes uninstalling it and reinstalling it helps. And, uh, Diane Brooks, good morning. We're coming up to 9.03 so we can get going with our devotions. I um, 
it's a good day just to sit back with a cup of coffee, I'll tell you that much. I have I have gardening and lawn work. And so, oh, Paulus Hill Smith. For trying to write these down. Let's get them so I don't forget anybody. Um, yeah, so I've had a lot of... Um, I mean, running back and forth to the cottage and uh, and then the, how hot it's been. You know, there's been some stuff that's been uh, set to the side and get to it. And now it looks like God's saying, okay, Tim, here, you're going to be in Allen Park all week long. And I'm giving you cool weather. Get that stuff done. So we'll have to do that. All right, 27 folks on this day. Welcome. Welcome to the devotions from the Allen Park Presbyterian Church. So glad that you're with us. We're going to get going here uh, on this rainy day from Southeast Michigan, wherever you are. I hope you're safe. I hope you're comfortable. And thank you for joining us. And we're going to start the day right. As I tell people, um, we get a lot of viewers on this. Not And, and quite a, about a third of them are live. And then two-thirds of them uh, watch later, uh, either maybe at a pause during the day or some people at the end of their day. And uh, But it's all designed to give thanks. Um, many of us here, uh, if, you're, if you're our live viewers, uh, this is our good morning. So uh, if you're watching this later, good afternoon or good evening, whenever it might be. But before we start uh, God's word for us today in the scriptures, um, we always want to prepare ourselves. And so I clear my mind and I do a breathing exercise. I breathe in for five, hold it for five, and then exhale for five. If you would like to join me, I welcome you to. Let's go. Are you ready? Here we go. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Okay. And Becky, you need to stay with Becky. I see that. Thank you, Helen. And Larry and Carolyn Thomas are joining us today, too. That's great. All right. So, um, when we get here, uh, we're going to open up with a psalm as we usually do, but i got to make sure I'm on the right day because I had to go catch up. Our Judges reading, there is so much going on in Judges, and we didn't have, of course, we do this Monday through Thursday, so we had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and maybe you read ahead or, or kept up with it, rather, as a, and so you know, I know many of us didn't, uh, so we've got some catching up to do in that Judges. I'm not going to read them. So don't worry, Carrie, she's probably going to be posting all the readings. I'll just kind of capsulate what happened from the last time that we saw it, which was on Thursday. But we're going to open up with Psalm 5. So let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. Give ear to my words, O Lord, give heed to my sighing. I listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness, because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths, their hearts are destruction, their throats are open graves, they flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels because of their many transgressions. Cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor, as with a shield. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. So, uh, we're going to move on to Judges. Now, today's reading is in the 12th chapter, and it's verses 1 through 7. Um, but if we read, you're going to say, okay, when we left this story on Thursday, right, um, we were hearing... Um, um, we were hearing about other names. And so who, who is this Jephthah and how did he come to be here? And um, 
So I want to uh, go back and just touch on that. And I've got to go back here quickly. As quickly as my computer will let me, right? So um, on Thursday, we left this. And we talked about Gideon, right? And how Gideon had done that. And had done everything that was good as far as defeating um, uh, the uh, um, the nation of Israel up against the Midianites, right, and the Amalekites, and um, there were some people that were um, that, that uh, were upset that Gideon did it with such a small army. So he invited everybody in into the final cleanup of that, right? And then Gideon dies, and it says that the nation of Israel, right, um, fell off, fell fell back from their belief. They started to worship the god of the balls, and um, so that was a bad bad scene, right, that was there. Again, we had Gideon, the weak one that was raised up by God, uh, wanted to make sure that everybody knew that. So then, on Saturday, if you had read ahead, you would hear about um, Gideon's son, who's now Jerobabel, right, and it's Abimelech. And Abimelech, right, after Gideon dies, he goes, right, and, um, you know, Gideon had multiple wives and multiple kids. He had 70 sons, we're told, right? And he goes to the people and say, hey, um, don't you want a king, right? Let me do this. And so what he does is he actually kills all of his brothers except for one, right? And um, But Jotham is the one that doesn't die. Well, Abimelech, he's in it for power for himself, right? So... Um, so he gets he gets appointed king, but he's really terrible. But Jotham, right, flees to avoid getting killed, and he's going to come back. And so that's uh, and 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 try to influence people away from his evil brother, right? So that's uh, and then the next thing that happens. I'm going to do it quickly here, right? Uh, all the people that appointed Abimelech, right? That he falls out with Abimelech. They 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 plot against him, right? And so what happens is that um, Jotham goes and says, you know, you brought this on yourself. So uh, God makes the people of Shechem, who are the people that are supporting Abimelech, and um, Abimelech is still in power. He's still got some power, and he goes against a tribe and uh, uh, goes uh, invades the city. And everybody, everybody gets uh, goes to a tower in the center of the city to avoid the attack. And so as Abimelech standing at the tower saying, I'm going to vanquish you, a woman takes a millstone, right, those big circular stones with a hole in the middle of them, and drops it down and hits Abimelech. Doesn't kill him, but crushes his skull. And Abimelech tells his attendant, kill me, right? I don't want anybody to, to think that a woman, right, that a woman killed me. So, um, there you go. So that's what happens. And then now we get introduced. I'm just like skipping over at 30,000 feet. So if you're, if this is interesting to you, you need to go back and read it yourself, which is all, it's all available. And, uh, now we hear about a new person, Jephthah, right? Who was again, not not his mom uh, was a prostitute. His dad was um, um, was Gilead, and Gilead was a very powerful warrior, right? And as they as um, they started to have more kids, uh, Gilead's wife says, "Get rid of, get rid of Jephthah. He's you know he's your child with a prostitute." We don't even want him in the line now. Technically, he was the firstborn son, so he should have he should have been uh, received a double share of everything, right? So they, they drive him out, and then what happens is the Amen, uh, Ammonites came and declared war against Israel, and so they need a leader, right? And they heard about Jephthah, so they go, and they say um, they say, "Will you come back?" And he goes, "Wait a second. You know, you didn't stand up for me before. He says, if you go and you deliver them, we will follow you. 
And of course he does, right? He makes a deal with God, though. And he says, look, if you deliver the, the heads of the Ammonites to me, right, I will give you, I will sacrifice to you the first person that comes out of my house after the battle. It's his only daughter that comes out, right? And this is one of the texts to terror, right, because she does end up being, um, 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 being sacrificed. And to this day, in modern-day Israel, they, um, they have a feast day where they celebrate uh, the daughter of, um, of Jephthah um, for what she gave, the life that she gave, right, for, uh, for the nation. So here we go. Now we get to David. And I'm sorry if you were bored by that. Uh, it's just that, you know, the Old Testament hangs together and, and uh, where we are in context matters. So that's why I thought that was worthwhile. I hope you did too. But here we go. For God's word for us today from Judges chapter 12, verses 1 through 7. The men of Ephraim were called to arms, and they crossed to Zaphon and said to Jephthah, Why did you cross over to fight against the uh, Ammonites and did not call us to go with you? We will burn your house down over you. I'm going to pause right here. So you can see that there's some, remember what I said on Thursday, you know, success has many fathers and failure is a bastard child. Here we go. They're like, you did this, but you didn't include us in it. You know, if it had gone the other way, maybe not so much. So, so Jephthah said to them, my people and I were engaged in conflict with the Ammonites who oppressed us severely. But when I called you, you did not deliver me from their hand. When I saw that you would not deliver me, I took my life in my hand and crossed over against the Ammonites, and the Lord gave them into my hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against me? So he's saying, I did ask you. You said no. Then Jephthah gathered all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim, and the men of Gilead defeated Ephraim because they said, you are fugitives from Ephraim, you Gileites, in the heart of Ephraim and Manasseh. So they're saying, you know, you guys ran away. So, but they... They laid into them pretty good, right? The good guys. Then the Gileites took the fords of the Jordan against the Ephraimites. Whenever one of the fugitives of Ephraim said, let me go over, the men of Gilead would say to him, are you an Ephraimite? And when he said no, they said to him, then say, Shibboleth. He said, Shibboleth, for he could not pronounce uh, uh, for he could not pronounce it right. So there's the differences in the dialects, you know? It's almost like, you know, say, uh, you know, say a word and you go, oh, ah. Nope, you can't say it right. You're lying to us. Then they seized him and killed him at the fords of the Jordan. 42,000 the Ephraimites fell at that time. Jephthah judged Israel for six years. Then Jephthah the Gilead died and was buried in his town in Gilead. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. So we've got this. We're in the period of the judges, and we're kind of going through the succession of judges. And this followed after Joshua died. There's no king. Of Israel and God doesn't want it to be a king but we're gonna find out later that the people say we want to be like the other nations and that's so these this is a period of judges and it didn't go really well right because they were ordinary people and um, and so that they were based on their own personal politics rather than the good of the, the, the people many times so that's where we find ourselves all right, now let's move into the New Testament. We're in Acts chapter 5, verses 12 through 26. And uh, we don't need to catch up on here. We're just going to pick it up right where we are. So let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. Now many signs and wonders were done among the people through the apostles. So remember, there's disciples and apostles, and the disciples, some of the disciples became apostles. Apostles are, uh, means the sent ones. Disciples just means a follower kind of a, a higher level of, of uh, belief, maybe. I don't know if that's the right way to put it. Um, so there's this is post the resurrection of Christ. It's the early church, right? And they're saying that these signs and wonders, these miracles, right, were occurring. And they were all together in Solomon's portico. Where's Solomon's portico? This is at the, the top of the Temple Mount before you go into the temple. So it was... Uh, it was a shaded area, uh, but more like aisle shaded, not, not a complete roof over it. 
So that was Solomon's portico. It was at, at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Let's continue on. None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. Yet more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, great numbers of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats in order that Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he came by. A great number of people would also gather from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. Then the high priest took action. This is the chief guy in the temple. All this stuff is happening, most of this stuff is happening, you know, at the entrance to the temple. And he's not happy about it. He and all who were with him, that is, the sect of the Sadducees, being filled with jealousy, arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors, brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about this life. When they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and went on with their teaching. So uh, uh, this happens to Paul and Silas. You know, there, there's release from physical prisons. Um, and so here's the apostles, the ones that were willing to do it. They were teaching in the temple, healing in the temple, making converts to Christianity. And again, it wasn't, they, weren't, they weren't turning their back on Judaism by doing so. But yet the people in power, the Sadducees, were not happy about that. And um, so the angel of the Lord goes and lets them out of prison and says, go back. So they go. When the high priest and those with him arrived... They called together the council and the whole body of the elders of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the temple police went there, they did not find them in the prison. So they returned and reported, we found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were perplexed about them, wondering what might be going on. Then someone arrived and announced, look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple teaching the people. And the captain went with the temple police and brought them, but without violence, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. All right, so ends this reading of the word of the Lord. Pick that rest of that up tomorrow. But think about that as freedom of prison. It's also its oppression, and it's also the, the, physical, the prisons that we put ourselves in, or other people put us in. Maybe it's not you know, um, a physical prison, but it could be an emotional prison that we're in, seeking seeking to be released from that. And that's what, when we do find that healing. All right, now we're in Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. And uh, probably one of the more famous verses of the Bible is going to be heard here. Again, we heard the, through it all, throughout it all, we hear the beautiful prose of John. And um, here's the thing that's godly. One of the things that's really godly about this is that when this is poetic in Greek and when it's translated into English, it is just as poetic. So, I mean, I, that's just God breathed when you can do that. So here we go. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. I'm going to pause right there just so we know what Pharisees are. Pharisees were a sect of Judaism, and they were law keepers, right? So they always looked at the law, and they were very, very um, uh, pious. That's a way to put that. So here's Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee. He was a leader, right? He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher uh, who has come from God. No one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Pause right there. So this is somebody whose group is standing against Jesus. And he's a leader of them. He should be too. But yet he sees these signs and wonders that Jesus is doing. And he comes and he calls him teacher, a sign of respect. Right? And we know that you came from God. Right? Because what you're doing has to be from God. So it, it's, it's, a, it's an allowance of of Nicodemus saying, I know who you are, but he comes under night so nobody sees him. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? 
Can one enter a, a second time into the mother's womb and be born? He's taking it very literally. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? So we're going to pause, because he's going to, we're going to hear. Uh, so this is, we have this difference, and this isn't unusual in the Bible. We have a very literal, somebody taking it very literally, and saying, how can you be born again? I'm an adult. What am I going to do? Climb back into my mother's womb to be born again? He goes, no, you're born from above, right? And he's talking about a spiritual rebirth, right? And uh, now, in the uh, in our United States history of Christianity, uh, we had a big movement that happened in the 70s called the Born Again Movement, right? People that saying that, hey, look, I, I surrender my life to God and the Holy Spirit, so I am now born again. And... Uh, what we find out, uh, what we found out, was just like you know, people who smoked and then stopped, they become the, the biggest uh, uh, supporters of of, uh, of uh, stopping smoking and even become judgmental of people at times. You know, our own our own born again people had that problem too, and that's kind of morphed into the into the evangelical right, which is fine, right? Except now, that's influencing some politics, and we need to be careful of that. I think. So, but we're going to continue on here. Jesus is going to explain himself a little bit more. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I had told you about an earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in this wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. I'm going to pause there. So Moses lifting up the serpent. There was a, 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 a golden snake that we can see in Exodus, that there were snakes that were in the whole camp of Israel, and they were biting people, and people were dying. And what they did is they made this, this serpent, and they put it up on a pole, and um, when people looked at that, the snakes lost their venomous. And, um, so Jesus is saying, just as that helped people, I'm going to be lifted up. Very reminiscent of being on the cross, right? And then we get John 3.16. We all know this. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and the people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Beautiful, beautiful uh, prose. And again, this uh, translation may, continues to be beautiful on it. Um, and... Uh, you know, it's a, but it's a very exclusive claim, right? Jesus is telling Nicodemus that the only way that you can come to God is through the Son. John continues on to this, right? So again, it becomes this exclusive claim about being a child of God. And, uh, and that's resulted in some real discussions um, because... You know, it talks about the truthfulness of other religions, uh, the value of other religions, 
in a way it passes judgment on other religions in, in our modern to our modern ears when we hear that right um, and uh, I, I think we need to think about that I really do because there is salvation to be found in Christ but it's up to God it's up to God all right go over here see what's going on I have we have 24 folks so we actually had 27, so we've lost a few. Going back here. Oop, I gotta find this. I gotta get to where we were. So we don't forget anybody. Hi, Judy Sutherland. There we are. Norma Bentley, I think I said hello, right? You had some comments there, but if I forgot you, hello. And, um, Hey, Barry and Margo are with us. Pat McBride, good morning. Don Jones, are you going back up? All right, Godspeed. Hi, Ken Woods. Okay. Yes, John Doan says the backdrop for the session meeting. So that is, before we pray, I should have, should have given that in the news. So we took uh, July off, but we're going to have an August session meeting, and it is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. on via Zoom. So if you are an elder or somebody who participates in the session meeting, um, be on the lookout probably oh, late tonight or early tomorrow. It's just we're tr all trying to get all those reports and everything in, but we'll have, we will meet via Zoom. And the, and the Zoom link, we'll make sure we send that Zoom link too. All right? So that's uh, that's the news right there. Session is getting back into, into session, right? Are you ready to pray? Okay. I've been on for a while. This one's extended out, and I know why. It's because we had to explain judges. So, But we got a lot of people to pray for and things to pray for. And so uh, let's let's go to prayer right now. Heavenly God, as we come together before you today, first of all, we want to thank you for the rain that we're receiving. Um, it's been so dry. And Lord, uh, we know that our, there's farmers, that uh, there's crops desperately need rain. And so we hope that this rain has come in a period of time where that it can help their uh, crops to flourish. And that if they had any concern about uh, a, a poor yield, that they, that might be uh, soothed and that their lives would be made easier from that knowledge. And we also lift up all who are in need of healing. We have a lot of people from a health standpoint, Lord, people that are uh, having problems in the process of being diagnosed, in the process of being healed. Well, we're all in the process of being healed, but Lord, um, we want to lift up these people because, Lord, we know that you've given wisdom and talent to physicians and nurses and other health care providers. And Lord, we just ask that that uh, their gifts and talents be poured out on these people and that your hand also hold them in safety and security and that you give them the knowledge, the Holy Spirit, that you are with them and that healing is in process. So we want to lift up uh, Audie who is going to be undergoing knee surgery. We want to lift up um, Jeff and Liz, Paula Hill-Smith. We want to lift up... Uh, uh, we want to lift up back, Lord, all these people uh, we want to lift up, and, and, and named and unnamed, because there's so many more people. We want to lift up Beth Stanton, and, uh, and we lift up, just in the silence of our prayers, we all lift up those people who we know, perhaps ourselves, that are in need of health and healing. Come, Holy Spirit, enliven us and free us. Lord, uh, deliver us safely to the places that we're going. We pray for Godspeed for all, especially for Don Jones, who will be traveling today. And then, Lord, as we put ourselves to bed tonight, give us the assurance that uh, as we rest, that you'll brighten tomorrow with a sunrise and new hope and new dreams. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Amen all. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. I hope that everybody is, uh, has a great day in the Lord. Remember, God loves you. I love you. We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. We'd love to show you how, especially by praying. We'd love to pray with you. So um, let us know. All right. And thank you for your support of our ministries here. And uh, get involved. Get involved. It all helps. All right. Have a great day in the Lord. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.